A serious cook should be considering a serious set of knives. There's a lot of knives that are being advertised, marketed, and promoted as professional chef sets. Unfortunately, knives and knife sets in general have had a historic reputation of ripping us off. In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys some of my experiences when purchasing a knife and the most common mistakes that everybody makes, which will hopefully help you save some money. Let's dive in. Okay, so to give you guys some background, I'm not necessarily like a knife enthusiast growing up and being with a lot of chefs and just being in that restaurant environment. I've always gotten the takeaway that your knives need to work, they need to have a purpose, and they need to be dependable day in and day out. So I've always just kind of stuck with that. This video is not necessarily gonna be an enthusiast review of knives. It's more gonna be informational for practical reasons to buy knives and to avoid certain scenarios that's gonna help you, the home cook, buy a good set of knives that you can use day in and day out in your home kitchen or maybe even your small business or restaurant. And later on, if you realize you really like knives and you wanna start a collection, that's great. Okay, let's start off with the first purchase that everybody makes, a block set. This is a typical knife block set that you'll find everywhere, right? Walmart, Target, Amazon, you name it. It's usually marketed and advertised as having a lot of pieces, right? A lot of bang and value for your buck. This particular set has steak knives, you'll have your traditional chef knife, a santoku, a honing rod, usually a slicing knife, a bread knife, even kitchen scissors, and utility knives. So it's a very stylish looking set, comes in a nice block. They do have the traditional Western style with the Western handle. It's better than what you would usually find. And I think the knives hold a pretty decent edge, but you do have to sharpen them pretty frequently. So not all block sets or block knives are bad, right? I mean, it's just the majority out there, like 80% of them out there are not very good. There's a reason why the manufacturer loads them with several different pieces and advertise them as the best bang for your buck. They're usually mass produced, very cheap materials and it's actually cost savings for the manufacturer to include the set of very mediocre or even cheaply made knives and sell it to you as a whole, jacking up the price. I want to stress that not every block set out there is bad and you shouldn't be ashamed if you have bought one before that wasn't great or if you are considering one. What I'm trying to say is don't necessarily jump at the first set that's being marketed or advertised as a great value just because it has three or even four more additional pieces than the competitor that may be a little bit higher. What you should be focusing on is what is actually being included and what's the quality of each piece that's being included, not necessarily the quantity. That's, I think, the biggest mistake that people make. Leading manufacturers, good manufacturers, do have their own block sets. And usually it's their really good and individual knives that they just pair together and put in a block with fairly nice wood. But the price is considerably more than what you usually would find in these budget-friendly sets. I'm gonna link this one in the description below. I bought it off of Amazon. I got it for really cheap on Amazon Prime. I think it was advertised as 40 bucks. It's gained popularity. A lot of people are now finding it for like 80 and 100 bucks. I don't know if it's worth that price. I think it's a, it's a better value at what I bought it for. I think it's a good buy, so I'll link it below, but maybe hold off. Let me, let me explain what you should do. Okay, so if you're not gonna buy a block set, then what should you buy? There's really three or four knives that you should really be considering that I think are practical and that you're gonna use every day, day in and day out. The first one and probably the most important one is a chef knife. The next knife that you should be considering, hands down, is a small utility knife. And it's really gonna be useful when you're trying to do really delicate work or carving or even peeling. The next knife that I think you should be considering is a bread knife. A bread knife is good to have in your kitchen for when you need to slice up some bread or if you're doing a lot of sandwiches, in particular if you're slicing a lot of sourdough. So bread knives are useful. They may not be used every single day, but it is something that's good to have on hand. Likewise, a good slicing knife 
may be also a good option for you. Now, I think the majority of slicing knives that come in a block set are not very good, but you can see what I'm getting at here. A bread knife and a carving or slicing knife may not be something that you're gonna use all the time. It may be something that you can use occasionally. For example, I use a carving knife pretty frequently because I'm always doing roasts or you know making a whole chicken or a turkey or a brisket and so forth. A lot of you guys are probably gonna need a carving or slicing knife for Thanksgiving and you probably won't use it the majority of the time after that. So that's why a bread knife and a carving knife is kind of optional. You need to kind of figure out what you need. And if you really do need it, invest in a good one. Out of the block set, you can see that there's really only three, four, maybe five pieces out of the 11, 14 piece set that they advertise that's actually useful. Let's talk about chef knives. I really wanted to dedicate a segment entirely to chef knives because it is the jack of all trade knife and it is the number one knife you should invest in off the bat. The first two are traditional Western style chef knives. And the last one is a Japanese Santoku knife, which is gaining popularity. So let's talk about the Western style. I have two right here. One of them is a very cheap, economical, and highly popular brand made by Victoria Knox. And the other one is a very well marketed Dell Strong above average chef knife. The Western style chef knife usually has this Western handle that kind of contours to your hand and it's a bit more boxier. You'll typically find them around eight to nine inches in length. They're really good knives for a rocking motion. If you like to chop up your food and rock back and forth, you can also go up and down. And because of the length and the size of these knives, a traditional chef knife can be used for almost anything, for preparing your vegetables, for even slicing and carving, preparing chicken, you name it. Knives that you should be considering, and actually a knife that I highly recommend that's extremely popular right now, is the Victoria Knox chef knife. This is a really, really good knife. It's not a handmade or hand forged knife. It's not gonna be the highest quality knife, but it's an amazing knife to have. And I always recommend it for first time cooks that are looking for a good chef knife. So this particular one is the Fibrox Pro eight inch chef knife. And it actually has a great reputation in the cooking world. Usually you'll find these in the kitchen in the stock room as spares because most chefs will have their own specific sets that they actually carry and take with them on a daily basis. But we've seen these as just stock chef knives that we keep in the kitchen. And that alone should tell you a lot, right? If restaurants are willing to buy these and keep them stocked in the kitchen, they're obviously really good. I like the feel of the Victoria Knox. It holds a relatively good sharp edge. It's known for having this textured rubber plastic grip, but it's really well done. It feels good, feels good in the hand. You can really get a good grip on it. And it's certified NSF. Before this thing got really, really popular, they were actually selling for around $20 to $30, between that range. They've increased that price a bit now, right? Supply and demand. I usually have to sharpen this knife around two times a year. As long as I keep up with the honing, edge retention's really, really good. So I'm pretty impressed with this knife. I think for the, for the price and the budget feel of it, it's not gonna wow anybody if you take it out, but if you do take it out and use it, chances are people are gonna know exactly what you have in your hand. So this is a great budget-friendly knife that I think you should consider. The next brand that I wanna talk about is actually Dell Strong. Now, Dell Strong has been hit or miss with me. I think Dell Strong is a great company that is really, really, really good at marketing and advertising. This Dell Strong knife is actually a Damascus knife that is their Shogun series, their Shogun X series. And it's one of the top of the line series. I'm not gonna get into everything that this knife has. It has a lot of bells and whistles, but Dell Strong just in general is a really good marketed brand that offers an above average knife. You'll find Dell Strong style knives from different manufacturers, different Chinese manufacturers at a much lower price and they're essentially the same thing. So really Dell Strong is charging you for the marketing, for the advertising, for the branding. This chef knife comes in around hundred bucks. Usually you'll find it at hundred dollars, but you can find it for much cheaper. I bought this particular one off of eBay. Someone had bought it 
and didn't use it or didn't like it for whatever reason. I think I got it for $75, which I think is a great value. And if you like the traditional Western style knives, Dell Strong looks great, right? It looks great, but this particular chef knife holds a great edge. It's very practical, feels good in the hand. And if I was buying a chef knife that, you know, I wanted to look really good, but didn't want to spend that extra pro level money, I think Dell Strong is a great home cook brand to look at. I think some of their knives are more marketing and fluff than they are practical, but a lot of their knives are really, really nice. So you're probably asking why buy a Dell Strong, right? If you can find the same knife style from a different Chinese manufacturer, essentially the same knife for $40 versus hundred, why would you buy Dell Strong? I think the value in Dell Strong comes in their warranty. They back all their knives up hundred percent Anything happens to the knife, you give them a call and they will take care of you. Anytime I've unboxed a Dale Strong, I've always been very, very pleasantly surprised. They kind of box their knives up like Apple, right? I feel like I'm unboxing an Apple product and I like that. They include a nice sheath, usually for all their Shogun series knives, which is great because not a lot of knife manufacturers include that. Even the high-end knife manufacturers, they don't really include a sheath. So I like that. Dale Strong is a good brand. Here's some more Dale Strong knives that I've purchased over the years. This is their S bevel Japanese you know, style. And then this one's another Shogun series, kind of a mixture of a meat cleaver and a chef knife. I actually really like this knife. I use it a lot. It looks great, but I actually find it very practical. Kind of used it as my slicing and carving knife for a while because it has a pretty good length to it. But yeah, this is another Dale Strong knife. This one I don't think is Damascus. I bought this primarily for cutting up chicken. Kind of hard to sharpen, takes a little bit more finesse, but it's really nice. This one on the other hand, the marketing got me. I bought it because it looked great and I thought it would be a really nice meat cleaver slash chef knife slash slicing and carving knife. And it's done very well, but if I have to admit, the marketing got me. So let's talk about the Santoku. This is a really good knife. A Santoku knife is much smaller, flatter. You're not gonna get that rocking motion. It's more of an up and down motion, but because of the size of this thing, and if you do a lot of chopping, a lot of people find it just really nice. It fits really good in the hand. You have a lot of control. And if you don't have a lot of countertop space, they're really popular because they don't take up a lot of room and you feel like you have control of the knife. It really comes down to preference. I highly recommend you try them out for yourself and you figure out what's right for you. This particular brand's actually made by a knife manufacturer that's called, I think it's Toyo Cuttery, Toyo, something like that. I've actually never heard of this knife manufacturer, but you can see here that they resemble Dale Strong. And that's actually why I bought this particular knife because I wanted to show you guys that there's a lot of Dale Strong copycats out there. This one is like 40% off what Dale Strong, you know, advertises for their Santoko. And honestly, it's the same exact knife, just different branding. But if you look at these two knives together, the Dale Strong and the Toyo, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce this brand. They're very similar. The Dale Strong is definitely Damascus. I can see that's been hammered. This one on the other hand, looks like it's laser etched. I don't think it's actual Damascus. The straight line here is kind of giving it away. If you look at the Dale Strong, that straight line right here, the Damascus line is wavy, which makes sense if you're hammering it. This one's absolutely straight, so it's computer or laser etched. Both are extremely similar. Look at those handles. The Dale Strong is a Western handle. This one's kind of mimicking a Japanese style handle where it's more round. For most home cooks, I think a lot of you guys will be really happy with these knives. Another chef knife to consider is a Japanese Keretsuk. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it the Japanese way, but it's a different style chef knife. Um, these are reserved for the head chef, the master chef. I love these style knives. I mean, I bought two just to show you the quality difference. This one's again by Toyo. It's the Toyo Ring series and it's supposed to be Damascus steel. It looks like it might be Damascus steel. I'm not sure, but let me show you a high quality version of this. So this is really the only handmade high budget knife that I've bought and it's a carbon steel knife. This is hand forged by a knife expert in Japan. I paid $300 for this knife and I absolutely love it. There is some discoloration. It's normal with carbon steel, especially when you 
or chopping up onions and stuff like that, it's normal to expect some discoloration. It's not rust. I oil this knife just like my carbon steel pans and skillets. You have to treat it the exact same way or it will rust on you. This is a true Damascus knife that is hand forged in Japan. I can't even describe the edge retention on this knife. It will cut things paper thin, no problem. This isn't something that you would find in a traditional restaurant quality that everyone would be carrying. It's really reserved for the head chef. And I just think it's an absolutely beautiful piece of art. So I wanted to buy one. I don't use this very often. There's not a lot of countertop space for me, but if I could, I would. I would use it all the time. After owning a carbon steel knife, yes, the maintenance is you know a lot more frequent with it. I can tell you that I'm a carbon steel believer. I mean, I love carbon steel cookware and pans and skillets, as you guys know. Even in a knife, it's just amazing. Carbon steel just enhances the cutting experience, the edge retention. If you can afford a carbon steel knife, a true carbon steel knife, and you want to spurge on something great, this is the knife to get. It really is. I will leave a link below just in case you guys are considering it. But for the purposes of this video, if you're new to cooking, don't buy this knife. This is, this is something that's just a Ferrari in the kitchen, right? That you take out once in a while and really enjoy the experience. So it's a fantastic example of art. It's just, it's just gorgeous. It's just art. So like I said, for us, we needed a carving and slicing knife and I didn't want to buy something that was ridiculously expensive. I wanted something that I know was going to work and was going to be practical because we don't use it very often. I went with the tried and true Victorian Knox. It's from the same brand that I showed you guys earlier with the chef knife, but this is their slicing carving knife and it's used exclusively in the barbecue world, the barbecue culture, it's well known. I love this carving and slicing knife. I think it comes in at under 60 bucks. So it's great, it served its purpose. Very, very nice, you know, sturdy design. I've had this for a while now and I've never had to sharpen it yet because, you know, I don't use it as frequently as a chef knife, but I hone it every time I use it, before I use it, and after I'm done using it, it's held its edge amazingly. So this is a great, carving slicing knife that I highly recommend. I don't do a lot of my own butchering, but I did consider a meat cleaver. Now I knew I'm not gonna use it too frequently. So this was more of just an impulse pie because I thought it was cool and I don't use a meat cleaver very often or seriously. This was like a Amazon purchase. It's a dragon style. I don't, I don't even know what to call this actually. I don't know if it's Damascus or what. They claimed it was carbon steel. It's not carbon steel. I can tell it's not carbon steel, but I just thought it was cool. This was a fun purchase. I honestly didn't really end up using this very often. It's just kind of a cool showpiece and there's nothing wrong with that. Occasionally it's okay to buy this, these fun knives, these, these gimmick knives, these hunting knives. I don't know what to call this knife, but it's a meat cleaver. You can use a meat cleaver to chop up and dice your vegetables. It's, they're actually very popular for that, having a meat cleaver dedicated for dicing and chopping and it's heavy so you know if you have to do some butchering chop through bone i've done it before with this knife and it's done fine but i just can't see myself seriously considering a meat cleaver for hundreds of dollars but i did want to mention a meat cleaver unfortunately this is the only meat cleaver that i have so i don't have a good brand to represent a meat cleaver so i kind of just took this one out but for you, a meat cleaver may be essential. Just make sure that you understand what the manufacturer's purpose for the meat cleaver was, whether it was dicing or butcher. Okay, now let's talk about maintenance and sharpening your knives. It doesn't matter what kind of knife you buy out there, even if it's the most expensive knife. If you allow it to go dull and you don't keep up with daily maintenance like honing or even occasional resharpening, it's useless. A dull knife is actually a very dangerous knife. Now. For day-to-day -day maintenance, for day-to-day -day upkeeping, I highly recommend you invest in a honing rod. This honing rod right here is made out of ceramic, and I use this for all of my high-end Japanese knives, even my carbon steel knives. This does an amazing job. It always brings back the edge retention on almost all my knives. This one's a typical one that you'll find in a block set, and it came with the block set that I mentioned earlier. A couple things to note, it's a lot shorter than the ceramic one, which, isn't very great. And the guide that's supposed to protect your hands, 
from getting chopped off is uh, very small. There's very little protection here. The next thing you should consider is a honing rod or a leather honing strop. This will definitely get your knives at that razor edge sharpness. You usually use this though after you've resharpened your knives using a sharpening block. You'll see a lot of people demonstrating how sharp their knives are by taking a piece of paper and slicing it. Well, this will definitely help you achieve that. Now let's talk about actually resharpening your knife and why you need to resharpen your knife. When you have a dull knife, what's going on is the edge of the knife is now rolling over on itself. The reason why it's so important to use a honing rod for daily maintenance, daily upkeeping is because even if you use your knife to cut up a vegetable that day or whatever, you may not notice right away that your knife's losing some of its sharpness. You actually may not be losing much edge retention on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's important to maintain the knife, to keep that edge from rolling over too much, right? Too drastically. And what a honing rod does is hones the edge back to center and keeps your knife extra, extra sharp, right? Keeps that edge retention. But eventually, all knives, no matter how expensive they are, eventually they need resharpening, which is completely normal. And basically you get what you pay for, right? You're paying for that quality, that edge retention. This is probably the most typical thing that you'll find. This is advertised as a knife sharpener. Usually you have two ceramic discs in there and when you glide your knife through it, the two discs will kind of refine the edge. I think these work more like a honing rod than they do actually resharpening a knife. And because they don't have, you know, a way to really define or set the angle, because every knife's edge has a different angle to it, right? This thing has one setting. You really can't find the edge. You can't find the angle. So you're running your knife through this and the angles may not even match. I would skip out on these. Likewise, another popular option is an electric sharpener. I really, really compare those to honing. They're actually sharpening your knife. Actually, they're more like grinding your knife. They're grinding the edge off. I do not recommend an electric sharpener. I don't have one to show you guys here. I wouldn't bother with one. What I recommend is a sharpening block or a sharpening stone. This takes a lot of skill. So what I did when I first learned how to use this is I went out and bought one of those cheap 10 or $20 chef knives and I would just practice on it all the time. You have to find the angle of your edge, but once you do, you're gonna get the sharpest possible knife out there. Okay, what about cleaning your knives? You just bought your first amazing high quality chef knife. How do you clean it? You know how to maintain it, you know how to resharpen it. Well, it all depends on what kind of knife you bought and the materials. Now, typically for most knives out there, you don't necessarily have to worry about rusting if the knife is wet or if it's left out and you didn't completely dry it. But if you have a carbon steel knife, like I mentioned before, you have to treat it like your carbon steel pan or your cast iron pans. You have to make sure it's completely dry and you properly oil it before storing it, especially for long periods of time. A nice thin layer of oil. Manufacturers will sell you their own oil. You can use your own vegetable oil, your favorite vegetable oil if you like. Never put any of your knives in the dishwasher. I don't care what the manufacturer says. And a good manufacturer will mention that. They will always tell you to hand wash your knives. Don't wash them and then store them in a dish rack and you know put all your dishes in there. I like to store all of my knives on the wall on a magnetic strip. I just kind of put them on there and leave them hanging. The strip that I have, it's very strong, it really does keep them very secure. And I have them pretty high up there so kids can't get to them, right? I'll put a link below to the magnetic strip that I use. But if you have a block set, for example, make sure you completely dry them off and put them back in the block set, you're good to go. Okay, so my final thoughts. There's a lot of brands out there that we didn't discuss. This video was mostly an introduction to knives. So if you guys want me to specifically review or talk about a particular knife, let me know in the comments below and I can make a detailed video about that. Likewise, if you wanna see a video on how to hone your knives or how to use a honing rod or even how to sharpen your knives using wet stones and sharpening stones, I can do that as well. I really wish that early on in the beginning, I would have invested in a good chef knife, a good paring knife, and you know, one or two specialty knives that I know I'm gonna need, like a carving knife or a bread knife. And I think that's it. I think for most people out there, that's the core set that you need. Some of you might even remember this, but door-to-door -door salesmen used to knock on everyone's door trying to sell you a set of knives. You still see it on the infomercials late at night, Those really got awful commercials where people are trying to sell you 
their knife set. And for a limited time, they'll throw in a second set, absolutely free, just pay shipping and handling. I think a lot of people out there are just intimidated by knives, there's so many different knives and they're being advertised and marketed in so many different ways and some of the marketing is very, very good. So it's tempting to purchase that knife. And hey, I've been bit by the marketing bug. There's actually one more knife that I've been kind of eyeing and that's the Bob Kramer 2.0 carbon steel knife. Figure out what you need. It's usually three or four knives and then go get it. That's it for me guys. I hope you found this video informative. Check out some of my other videos. I will catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Hey, everybody. How'd you guys like that last video? Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified on my next video. And if you can, please share with your family and friends. I would really appreciate it. Here's some more content that I think you guys are really gonna enjoy. Check them out. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.